I want to leap over buildings, want to fly over the shores, save the people from the villains, catch the crooks who rob the stores, write my name upon the sky, and when you call me, I'll be there, faster than a lightning flash, rushing through. <laughs> hey Gun Geeks, I'm Destiny from Fate of Destiny Media, and this is my complete review on the Ruger 2245 Light 22 Long Rifle Pistol. Much of my foundational marksmanship development was learned with the Ruger predecessor to the 2245, the Ruger Mark III Target. As many fond memories as I have with this classic pistol, I can recall as many frustrating flashbacks of how I never really got the hang of shooting with it. When my dad was first teaching me to shoot, after he was confident and I had mastered the safety rules and understood the fundamentals, I immediately switched to shooting his Springfield 1911 A1 loaded and just fell in love with the 1911 design. Years later, I found a happy medium in the Ruger 2245 Lite. It retains the range performance of the earlier Mark III design with a distinctly 1911 grip feel in a comfortably lightweight. Features. Grip. The grip is the one feature that most sold me on this style of 22 long rifle pistols. One of the advantages of the popular single stack 45 design is that it's narrow, but it's long enough to accommodate a wide range of hand sizes for women and men. The 2245, with its 1.13 inch wide grip and diamond checkered black wood laminate grip panels, emulate that popular angle and ergonomic grip well. Unfortunately, if you were looking to pop on your favorite 1911 grip panels, the Ruger doesn't accept them without a few hours of tinkering. The Ruger 2245 Lite also features front strap serrations and rear strap checkering. However, 1911 no lovers will note a couple of minor differences between the 2245 and typical 1911 grip in the controls. All three right-handed controls, bolt stop, manual safety, and uh, magazine release use cylindrical knobs with delineated faces. Standard for Ruger Mark III style pistols, but it's a detectable break from the 1911 style that the grip mimics. Trigger. I'm gonna safety check this real quick. Okay. After an initial take up of about a quarter inch, it breaks crisply after an additional 1 16th of an inch. What surprised me though was the weight of the pole. It's five pounds and nine and a half ounces on average, according to my Lyman digital trigger gauge. For single action pistols, as opposed to double action, like revolvers, or DASA pistols. In general, I don't consider a 5-ish pound trigger to be hefty, but when it's measured against its weightier Mark III target brother, it's found wanting. The 2245's trigger pull weight is more than 2 pounds heavier than the Mark III's average pull of 3 pounds and 1.5 and ounces. But if the heavier pull is an issue for you though, there are a number of aftermarket options available that are designed to improve the 2245 Lite's pull. One of these, the Volkortz and Accurizing Kit, advertises a lightened pull weight of 2.25 pounds. Sights. As a 22 long rifle target pistol, the Ruger 2245 would be incomplete without adjustable target sights. The Ruger's rear sight is adjustable for height and windage. The front sight is fixed to the 2245's fluted barrel shroud with just one screw. On that note, I have a little story to share about my experience with these sights at the range. After a few boxes of 22, I raised the pistol to start firing after putting in a fresh mag, and I realized that the front sight had rotated 90 degrees. Fortunately, I happened to carry a little tube of guntite, which is basically it's Loctite, but for firearms. And I keep a little tube of it in my range bag. I applied a little drop to this swinging sight screw, tighten it back into place with my little leather and skeletal tool. And then I checked out the siding to make sure I could continue with the review. And I got back to work. The whole fix took less than five minutes, but it would have ended my review work for the day if I hadn't happened to be prepared. The black on black sight picture, especially when I'm shooting at a black bullseye that these target sights offer, just it's not my personal favorite. It always takes me a magazine or two to get used to them. I also noticed that this front sight blade is untextured, which you'll see in certain lighting conditions causes a bit of a glare. Conveniently, that issue is quickly remedied with a dab of model paint or fishing lure paint or for the particularly thrifty nail polish.
You just put a little drop on the front sight. It cuts glare when you're shooting in sunny conditions, and it provides a higher contrast sight picture for quicker alignment. In the box, Ruger includes a weaver rail that attaches to your Ruger's upper receiver with three screws. Just add a little Loctite and you're set to throw on your favorite optic. Upper receiver. The 2245 light gets its designation from the lightweight receiver and frame that it utilizes. The upper receiver, including its fluted barrel shroud, is made of aluminum. Ruger's unique receiver design houses both its internal bolt, which Ruger markets improves accuracy over traditional short stroke moving slide designs, and its 4.4 inch barrel. The barrel itself features a 1 in 16 twist with six grooves ending with a 1 half 28 TPI threaded muzzle, which will fit a wide variety of suppressors. A few I'm debating picking up are the Griffin Armament check Checkmate, uh, the Silencer Co. Sparrow, or the Advanced Armament Pilot, Pilot 2. Ruger ships their 2245 light with this checkered black anodized red protector in place. The left side of the receiver also features a tactile and visual loaded chamber indicator. When a round is loaded and ready to fire, this slim bar protrudes from the left side of the gun. The top of it is stamped, loaded, and it has a little red marker. Frame. One area where Ruger was able to greatly affect weight reduction is in the frame. The 2245 light features a polymer Zytel frame, which brings the pistol's full weight to an airy 23 ounces unloaded. That's over a pound lighter than the traditional Mark III target's 41.4 ounce weight. The lightweight Ruger features right hand only controls, including bolt stop, lockable manual safety, and magazine release. At 1.13 inches, the overall width is narrower than my Springfield Range Officer 1911's one and a quarter inch overall width. I received my Ruger 2245 light in this white cardboard box. It's plain, except for the Ruger branding. The Ruger was wrapped in plastic and sat on top of this slim, screen-printed, zippered soft case. Comes with the standard manuals, a gun lock, um, there's this little key for locking that manual safety, and it comes with a pair of 10-round magazines. Oh, and this guy. So this is the trusty Mark III target, and then here's my new 2245 light for a side-by-side -side comparison. Not surprisingly, the most obvious difference I noticed is the difference in weight. The bull-barreled Mark III target has a hearty 19 ounces on the featherweight 2245 light. Some of that is a difference in the material. The 2245 light utilizes a polymer frame and aluminum receiver to reduce the weight instead of the Mark III's all steel body receiver and barrel. The light's shorter barrel also contributes to the lower overall weight. The Ruger 2245 light features a 4.4 inch barrel within its fluted aluminum barrel shroud instead of the Mark III's 5.5 inch bull barrel. That extended barrel contributes to the Mark III's greater overall length of nine and three quarter inches compared to the 2245 lights eight and a half inches overall. Another subtle difference between the Mark III and the light is in the width. The light is just a mite more slender, measuring an overall width of 1.13 inches instead of the Mark III's 1.2 inch overall width. One final difference is in the bolt release on these pistols. You can see here that the Mark III target uses this thin curved tab with a lightly serrated face, where the Ruger 2245 light utilizes this round bolt stop that slides upward to lock the bolt. Let's see here. There we go. And clicks downward to release it. Apart from their side-by-side -side comparison, these two Rugers run different on the range as well. What bummed me out was the difference in the trigger pull. I may not be in love with the Mark III's grip angle, but I do like the trigger. 
after my experience with this heavy target gun, I was kind of, well, disappointed that the 2245 trigger would be so heavy. Although the 2245 light is so much lighter than the Mark III, it doesn't really do anything noticeable to perceived recoil. What I did notice, however, is just how much every slight movement in my grip altered my aim. It's just easier to keep this hefty Mark III steady. But for me, that issue is offset by the 2245's more comfortable grip angle. However, thus far, I'm not quite as accurate with my new 2245 light as I am with this Ruger Mark III. Range performance. Accuracy. Unless you're some kind of pistol-wielding robot, practical accuracy is the result of the pairing of firearm and shooter ability. Regardless of this pistol's benched ability, I found that despite my preference for the 2245 light's grip angle, I wasn't able to dial, dial in my accuracy quite as well as I had hoped. I can narrow down my issues to a few features. First, as I mentioned earlier, the target sights are challenging to align quickly, especially in varying light conditions. Some of the elements that make the 2245 so light also have an adverse effect to maintaining accurate shots. The 2245 light's barrel is shorter and the overall weight is lighter, which is a little bit trickier to keep steady as the, or than the weightier steel Mark III. The dark sights can be remedied easily with a little bit of paint, or if you're going whole hog, there are several high-vis options available, such as replacement fiber optic sights. Eventually, through, through continued shooting, I've started to develop a firmer, steadier grip, which has begun to improve my groups. But that lack of solidity is an inescapable trade-off for the reduction in overall weight, reliability, and ammunition. The little light is a picky eater. I went through several different ammunition manufacturers to determine what seems to work best with it. Thus far, the CCI Mini Mag seems to be the favorite. With other ammo brands such as American Eagle or Eli Sport, I experienced a handful of errors, a light strike here, a stovepipe there, with every box. Even with the CCI, if I didn't keep the bolt lubricated with a drop or two of gun oil every 300 rounds or so, this dainty Ruger hiccuped on me. Generally, I can tell the bolt was getting dry when the pistol didn't cycle correctly, resulting in failures to feed or eject. Fortunately, I keep a small bottle of Hops Elite in my range bag. So it's like two stops for fresh oil, the 2245 threw through over a thousand rounds. It's not the hardy beast that the Mark III target has proved to be. My family's trusty Ruger has easily burned through over 20,000 rounds with all sorts of 22 long rifle with little lubrication and virtually no issue, and hasn't been cleaned in three years, which was like 10 to 15,000 rounds ago. Perceived recoil. Although the Ruger 2245 light is a featherweight, it still handles 22 long rifle without becoming jumpy. As you can see in the slow motion footage, even when firing single-handedly, the muzzle rise and perceived recoil are slight, hardly noticeable. The comfortable light grip and muted recoil experience make for a terrifically fun plinker, as long as you can keep feeding it 22. Price. With a MSRP of $499, the 2245 light's list price is nearly on par with its steel target 22 counterpart, the Mark III, with its list price of $469 for the basic model. It's worth noting that although the Ruger's Although Ruger's website quotes the 2245 lights price at just under $500, I have seen gun shops only charging 400 bucks for a brand new 2245 light pistol. Carry. There is considerable debate on whether a 22 long rifle is a viable self-defense round, but I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Personally, I don't feel comfortable with relying on that tiny 22 round to stop an attacker, but there are some who do opt for 22 long rifle for home or self-defense. If you're considering the 2245 light for concealed carry, I'll briefly discuss some of its advantages and disadvantages for that purpose. For a full-size pistol, the Ruger 2245 light is narrow, remarkably light, as well as low recoiling. That means that it's easy to control during sustained fire, and it's comfortable to carry. On the downside, however, the 2245 light is fitted with target sights. Not only is the sight picture tricky to track even in ideal light conditions. They're nigh impossible to align in dark or near dark. Not to mention, they don't employ a draw-friendly, snag-free design. I'm among the number of gun owners who dislike Ruger's magazine disconnect safety feature for carry pistols. If you don't dig it either, the magazine disconnect can be altered fairly easily. Something else that might be considered a disadvantage for concealed carry is the 2245 Lights magazine. When released, my magazines don't drop clear the pistol. It's a commonly reported problem, which your local gunsmith can likely remedy for a fee. Instead, when released, 
The magazine only drops like a quarter inch or so, forcing the shooter to pull the spent mag from the pistol before replacing it with a fresh one. The Ruger 2245 Lite is just as it advertises, a grip that emulates my favorite kind of 45 in a surprisingly light package. It does have its quirks with ammunition preferences, and its lightweight and dark sights make it trickier to be as accurate as with its heavier predecessor, the Mark III. But if you're looking for a little plinker for shooters of any skill level, the 2245 Lite will show you a fun time. But look at this cute tail. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs>